the students and their parents choose science subject. This is because mainly safe career, better job opportunities, and above all, medical and engineering stigma. And most of the students follow the mass without knowing their potential and ability. This is my personal experience, and that's why I prepare. I have seen a student, particularly student and their parent, particularly wants their children to go to science team after 10. This is because most of their parents, they want their student or their children to become either engineer or doctor. Very few students as well as uh, their parents wants their children to go to the, go to study the core subject. And what have seen after losing, losing means after could not qualify medical or engineering or very few students by choice take course science subject like physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, and so on. And I have seen most of the parents as well as students are not aware of the potential of their core subject and their career scope. And that is why this workshop is rightly organized at the right time to motivate the student to study the course subject. So before going to, or before motivating the student, I like to say that chemistry, you can say is a subject, is a like, uh, chemistry is a subject where the student or no one can avoid. So I can give one example. If you visit a busy city, you will get a crisscross of the road. And chemistry is like a crisscross. You cannot avoid. What happens whenever you are going through the road to cross another road, you will have to cross the crisscross. That, and whenever you are studying any science subject, you cannot avoid chemistry. So chemistry is interlinked to all science subjects. How it is interlinked? In first few slides, I will explain how chemistry is important. So before that, I just want to mention what is science. Science is nothing but is a systematic way to understand the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, testing, and then generating models to explain these observations. So there are many branches of science. Most of them overlap one another at some point of time to uplift the mankind. So in this diagram, I have shown here chemistry. This is linked with physics. Then it gives physical, chemical physics or physical chemistry. Chemistry, when it's linked with geology, it gives geochemistry. Chemistry, when linked with biology, we got biochemistry. And above that, we got mathematics. Mathematics actually is called the mother of all science subjects. So if you know mathematics, then you can, I hope everybody can study all science subjects nicely. And, and we know the physics basically, they studied the physical phenomenon of the earth and biology studies the life processes and chemistry is the bridging between the physics and chemistry. And that is why some combined subject or very important subjects nowadays are coming up. They are called when physics and chemistry join together, they are giving physical chemistry, they are giving physical uh, chemical physics, and they're also giving physical organic chemistry. So they are the new and emerging subject where chemistry and physics work together. Similarly, when chemistry and biology combines together, we got biochemistry, biological chemistry, and chemical biology. And above all, if you go to chemistry, and from chemistry, a large number of branches are now coming up. What are the branches? We can say biochemistry, medicinal chemistry, chemical physics, geochemistry, forensic science, atmospheric science, nuclear chemistry, chemical engineering, and so on. 
So now we should know why chemistry is very important. Chemistry is a scientific discipline that deals with the matter. Basically, we are dealing with the atoms, molecule, but it is not just about microscopic atom that doing the incredible things. It is the process that makes flower to galaxies. Uh, I'm getting some disturbance from some. So I request all the members uh, to mute themselves so that during presentation, I should not uh, get some sound. Okay. And another important question is that chemistry could help you satisfy your natural desire to understand how things work. For example, it could explain some of the very important things in the, uh, this we encounter in day-to-day -day life. For example, if you keep a cut apple for a few minutes, it becomes brownish color. Similarly, the batter of a cake, when it is kept in the oven, we got a beautiful, delicious cake. And similarly, when we cut an onion, then most of we are getting uh, uh, water in the eye, that is, we are crying. Why this is so? The student friend, you can interact with me. Can you sell, tell me why the apple, cut apple keep for some times, why there is a brown coloration? This is because I have seen, uh, I have written here only aerial oxidation. What happened here? In cells of the apple contain polyphenols. What happened? Polyphenols and one enzyme is present that is PPO. PPO that is polyphenol, polyphenol oxidase that oxidizes the polyhydroxy compound to orthoquinone. And that is on polymerization gives this brown coloration. Similarly, in baking also, student friend, can you tell me why butter of the cake is kept in oven, it becomes a very beautiful cake? This is because we added there soda or baking powder, as you know. And what happened on heating, it releases carbon dioxide and giving a flappy cake. So these are the general phenomena we always encounter. So this gives the idea why chemistry is very important for your career building. Now, so we have seen or uh, we have seen or we have uh, no, knowledge that plane or the bus can be hijacked. Can you ever have a thing that chemistry can also hijack our brain? This is, look at these three compounds here. I have mentioned here, one is dopamine, one is serotonin, other is oxytocin. These three compounds basically can, hi can hijack our brain. How they can hijack our brain? As you know, the dopamine, dopamine actually is a enzyme, is a messenger, you can say is a messenger enzyme. Another compound is called serotonin. Serotonin and its another derivative is called mena, uh, melatonin. So first of all, serotonin, this is a simple structure, serotonin is actually called the feel-good hormone. And another compound, this is called oxytocin, is called love-making hormone. Or, so these three compounds actually can hijack our brain. So look at here, if we have low dopamine content, less serotonin, and almost non-existence of oxytocin, then equals depression. Basically, the people who are having a problem of depression, basically they are having deficiencies of, deficiencies of all these three compounds. Again, when we have low dopamine, high serotonin, and low oxytocin, oxytocin, that gives happiness. Again, high dopamine, high serotonin, and high oxytocin equals to love. And if we are having higher dopamine compared to low serotonin and low oxytocin equals to anxiety. So, so this deficiency of any of this compound can hijack your brain. So keeping that point in mind, so 
that we know the chemistry is very important. So we are giving some few more similar example. What happen without chemistry? Without chemistry, actually, living in this modern society is not possible. So chemistry is a science that has its finger in just everything, from using toothpaste or brush after getting up from bed in the morning to dreaming in the night, or launching space shuttles to discovering new medicinal plant. Therefore, chemistry is an essential science that influences all aspects of our daily life. So what we understood, chemistry, that is chemical and its processes make some very important commodities which we are using in day-to-day -day activities. For example, cooking, we are using LPG, is a chemical compound. Similarly, batteries, food, paper, pills, soap, petrol, concrete, plastic, cloth, cracker, all coming off from chemistry and its processes. Another important point, we use our toothpaste. Do you know, the student friend, what is toothpaste? Actually, toothpaste contains a gel. That gel is called a abrasive. What is the role of abrasives? They can remove the dirt deposited on the teeth. What is the abrasive composed of? Abrasive is nothing but it's a mixture of aluminium hydroxide, calcium phosphate, and calcium carbonate. So this compound actually, this is the chemical compound, mixture of chemical compound we are using just before get uh, just after uh, getting up in the morning. Similarly, as you know, this is launching of the space shuttle. It's based on the law of physics, but the material we are using that's coming from chemistry. Similarly, the fuel, most important thing, the fuel that is used is a chemical compound, that is chemistry. What is the fuel we are using for launching the space shuttle? That is unsymmetrical dimethyl <coughs> hydrogen. It's a fuel and it is uh, nitrogen tetraoxide is used as the oxidizer of the fuel. So that gives a huge energy for lensing the space shuttle. So here I have seen how chemistry helps to dream at night. This is a simple compound, acetylcholine. Before acetylcholine, I like to mention something about melatonin. Just we mentioned serotonin. Melatonin is the derivative of serotonin. What is melatonin? Melatonin is called the sleeping hormone. What happened? Melatonin is basically released when light is low. That is, at the night, melatonin is secreted, and that makes you people sleep. And in the daytime, secretion of melatonin is very low. So that is why, in the daytime, basically, we are not sleeping. And even if some lights are on, then also secretion of melatonin is less, and that is why Sleeping at night also with light is difficult. And how dreaming is controlled by a chemical compound, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Basically, it is responsible for dreaming. What happened? This acetylcholine is basically secreted during sleeping. In the sleeping have some stages. One stage is called REM, that is rapid eye movement. During rapid eye movement, basically we, the dream comes to our mind. And that is possible when the concentration of acetylcholine is more. And acetylcholine, what happened during the REM sleeping, that is rapid eye movement sleeping, at that time, our brain, brain remains very active, like we are as awake. And acetylcholine helps us to memorize what we see in the dream. So we can see from dreaming to sleeping, everything is controlled by the chemical compound that is chemistry. So chemistry is really very interesting. And if you look at our body, and that is also made up of chemical compound, you can say protein, minerals, fats, and water, also you can say,
coming from chemistry or chemical process of chemistry uh, coming from process of chemistry so can we think about think of a day without chemistry it's very difficult so chemistry is not just about discovery rather than about creation in chemistry basically we are creating new things by process of chemistry so it is an art of the complexation of matter so nowadays what happen the scientists are creating some matters even they are very small measure in the scale of nanometer so another very interesting subject is coming up nanotechnologies so a world without chemistry means a world without synthetic material such as no telephone no computer no camera no mobile and also be a world without aspirin without soap shampoo toothpaste without cosmetics contraceptive pills glues paint or paper and if there is no paper then no newspaper no books so what we understand that physics decodes the law of universe biology decipher's those of the living world and chemistry is all about matter and its transmutations so overall physics we can say is the philosophy of science mathematics is the language of science and chemistry is called the art of nature so students basically we know major areas of chemistry as a bsc student we know inorganic chemistry organic chemistry physical chemistry and another two chemistry branches of chemistry basically we are not studying at the undergraduate level that is called analytical chemistry and other is biochemistry basically in inorganic chemistry we study the properties and behavior of all compound except organic compound what are the compound or what are the branches of science in chemistry we come under inorganic chemistry they are bioinorganic chemistry nuclear chemistry organometallic chemistry and solid state chemistry and in organic chemistry what we study we study the structure properties of the compound primarily of carbon and hydrogen it plays a crucial role in manufacturing agricultural and forest product rubber coal petroleum plastic and perfume so it include the branches of chemistry are medicinal chemistry polymer chemistry physical chemistry that is physical organic chemistry not physical chemistry sorry physical organic chemistry organometallic chemistry and stereochemistry and in physical chemistry we study the effect of chemical structure on physical proper, uh, physical properties of the substance so it include photochemistry surface chemistry chemical kinetics quantum chemistry and spectroscopy and in analytical chemistry basically what we are doing we are in this branch of science or branch of chemistry basically deals with qualitative and quantitative determination of the substances so it include forensic science environmental chemistry bioanalytical chemistry and industrial chemistry and in bioorganic chemistry the study of chemical reaction taking place in the living cell so this biochemistry part include the subject molecular biology genetic pharmacology toxicology clinical biochemistry and agricultural chemistry so as we understand the chemistry is very important subject and we also understood the major areas of the chemistry then as we are the undergraduate student how to work or how to take chemistry as a career what what will be our road map after undergraduate after completion of our bsc we should know actually what we can do as we are the bsc student bsc in chemistry after bsc chemistry we can go for msc chemistry we can do btech in chemical engineering we can do some certificate course or msc course in analytical chemistry we can do msc in biochemistry 
and some of students we can do beard also so after completing msc <coughs> sorry we can uh, go to geochemistry we can do mtech in chemical engineering mtech in petroleum technology and mtech in polymer chemistry and in other subject also and we can also do mphil and phd if we want to dedicate our life for teaching and research purpose so then how we can go for higher study in india basically we can do msc in iits also for that purpose we will have to qualify iit jam exam so jam exam is conducted all the iits together then we will have to qualify otherwise we have to qualify central university common entrance test or the entrance tests conducted by different universities for st higher study that is msc study msc for uh, msc and after completion of msc you can apr gate exam you can apr csi net also set and slate and if you want to study or if you continue your study in abroad then you will have to qualify gre this is called graduate record examination then esl ts that is international english Liter language test sy testing system okay. then you will have to qualify coifel test of english and foreign languages or if you want to study management in abroad then you have to qualify gmat so this, this is diagrammatically represented here so these are the courses you can do in india and if you want to pursue further career in abroad then you will have to qualify this examination after msc or bsc also so what are the career opportunities in the field of chemistry just as we understood how to complete our academic career after completion of academic career what we are, what we get a sea of career option is available before us after completion of your academic life so what are the career options it can be in the academics it can be in the government sector or it can be in the industry so you'll have to explore and you'll have to choose in which direction you want to go so if you want to go to academic line so there are many ways to pursue your passion for education from teaching or conducting original research to working in a lab or libraries so what i mean to say so if you go to academic institutions so you can try your luck in teaching profession or you can also do research and nowadays what happened research can also be taken as a career for future life also so in india there are around 38 research laboratories where the chemistry postgraduate students are taken for their uh, this uh, uh, in the scientist course in the academic uh, technical no. institution no. Are, yes is everybody asking anything if you have questions you can put it in the chat box okay so and if some of the student can also go for the government job the job which other graduate student can also apply that is you can serve the public as a researcher or by working areas such as regulatory affairs public policy or environmental uh, activist or in industry whether you work in the product development manufacturing or marketing a career in industry can benefit consumer as well as your company so at this point of time i i have one advice to all of the students as we have career academic career is all right 
and some of the student i like you to in politics also because i want the educated people more and more educated people also join in politics so that you can contribute immensely to the welfare of the society as well as our country so this is my personal advice to some of the student who basically likes politics so in this slide i have seen diagrammatically the job prospectus so after completion of your msc degree and after qualifying net or get or doing uh, phd you can go to university or university or colleges and without just after msc you can go to the e school and i also like some of you go some of the very good student should go for teaching in schools because our e school teaching is also very important so you can go to research and development just i already mentioned that research nowadays can be taken as a career after completion of your phd in india you can go for postdoc in india as well as in abroad and in abroad basically very good fellowships are given so you can continue your post doctoral research and the research can be taken as a career for your life so you can do lab you can be a lab chemist you can join manufacturing industries you can join non government organization so you can join semi government job or government job and nowadays a digital teaching platforms are there you can also join this digital teaching learning process also so i have shown some of the organizations where the chemistry graduate and post graduate can try their luck so they are yeah, in the government sector you can join bhava atomic research center defense research development organization indian space research organization department of atomic energy ministry of education union public service commission staff selection commission teaching agricultural sector so these are the government jobs you can go to semi government job also for example ongc iocl gail this is hp hindustan petroleum nrl bpcl ntpc and research and development so uh, i have seen in the technical session 2 there is one expert from industry that is when this is being taken so he will be able to motivate you people to join this oil sector some non government job you can try also that is reliance petroleum dabor chipla kedila reddish laboratories bharat biotech and cement and many more industries are there so where the chemistry graduate and post graduate can join so there is a large number of job opportunities for the student completing graduation and post graduation in chemistry so there are some other employment avenues i i just mentioned here in this slide so the student can join para, par, <coughs> pharmaceutical companies agrochemical industry petrochemical industry toiletry industry plastic manufacturing unit chemical manufacturers food processing industry paint manufacturing companies textile industries educational institutes independent laboratories environmental patent law firm space space exploration agencies forensic science department ceramic industry paper industry military system department so all these organizations or institute you can uh, join after completion of your msc or sometimes in after bsc so some of the exciting and interesting career options for chemistry lovers i am showing here so first is the forensic expert so most of you have seen the cid in the television what 
shown here the one uh, this alug tested a fake medicine so i am just requesting you people not to test the unknown substance like this so what happened in forensic science is a collection and preservation and examination of material at the kind scene and this forensic scientist will have to prepare a legal document to be submitted in the court of law after investigating the material available or material found at the crime site so some of the student can also involved in hazardous waste management chemist they are the part of the team identifying the chemical pollutant in the air water and soil and they will also be responsible for coming up with the ways to reduce the pollutant to reduce the harmful effect of this hazardous waste they are professional get hired by chemical companies government agencies and academia so as a chemist it is is a responsibility also to look at the environment the art what where we are now staying or inhabiting so we should make it safe for future generation also so the chemistry in this field also can contribute immensely so this chemical engineer the role of chemical engineer is to deal with the design of chemical plant and improve existing production method to convert raw material into useful product that is the chemical engineer they can plan some or chemical they can make some chemical plan to improve their quality also and improve their quality of the existing method and they can propose some new method to better productivity so i have already mentioned that research and development that is research can be taken as a career so how this its work in the field of chemistry involves applied research for developing material that makes our life easier similarly academics if you have a passion for academics you may consider it as a career option doctoral degree is preferable for better career option that is if you complete your doctoral degree and post doctoral degree you can be employed employed either in college or universities and nowadays what happen large number of digital digital online platforms are there so student after completing their graduation or under post graduation they can join different online platforms for teaching such as byju's an academy lead tata study vedantu check etc now coming to another very important subject in chemistry that is computational to be a computational scientist basically it applies high performance computing system to do advance the state of the art research in their respective applied discipline in physics chemistry or engineering so i like to mention some of the important point of computational chemistry nowadays what happen in in the industry or in any synthesis of any compound basically we go to the laboratory without knowing whether the compound will form or not or whether a for example a, a drug if you want to synthesize a drug we require to undergo a rigorous research in this field sometimes what happen at the end of this we may not be successful for that purpose computational chemist plays a very vital role what happen the computational chemist they use algorithm mathematical algorithm algorithm to solve the chemical problem by which they can predict predict whether a drug formation is possible or not or whether the drug and how it will work inside the human body that can be predicted with the help of this computational chemistry so what will happen if we know or if we, if we can apply computational technique in then we can reduce the time and we can reduce the labor to successfully synthesize the drug as well as our target products 
So computational chemist chemist can contribute can con contribute a lot to the development of the society. So after completing their graduation and post graduation in India, there are some financial or funding agencies who can support your higher education in India. So for performing or to doing PhD, there are many financial assistance in the form of scholarships are given by the government of India in the form of prime minister's research fellowship that is called PMRF, CSR, UGC, JRF fellowship, DBT, JRF fellowship, Shark Agricultural PhD scholarship, Shami Vivekananda Single Child Scholarship for Research in Social Science, SO NSS Junior Research Fellowship, Vision India Foundation Fellowship, Burning Questions Fellowship Award, Google PhD Scholarship, Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund, and ICHR Junior Research Fellowship. So these are the fellowships given by some government and non-government organization for pursuing PhD in India after completion of your MSc. So now some very important point is that why what the chemical scientists should have in them to be successful in their life or what the employer actually looking for to have in the chemist. So you'll have to learn skill for being a successful in future such as the problem solving ability, you should have numerical ability and computational skill. And above all, to be employed in the institute, you should also should have the ability to do in a team that is teamwork. You should have better communication skill. So you should communicate with your friend or colleague. So you should have better communication skill. You should have better thinking ability that is reasoning and logical thinking. So if you have all this quality, probably you will be able to become a very successful chemical scientist. And for be successful, some of the very important point you should be in your mind, that is you should to achieve any goal, an idea has to be there in you. You should try, try and try again. And you should also possess this three Ds. What are these three Ds? You should be very disciplined. You should have dedication and determination to be successful or to be focused to a particular point. And you should be very honest and innocent and above all should be a very good moral character. So what we understand then to be a successful. So one quotation we can mention here, it is a journey, not the destination that matter. What we understood from this quotation is that during journey for doing something, we gather experience in all the stages of our life. So before reaching or going or to reaching the destination, we should gather the experience to be successful in your life. And few points I like to mention here, the secret of success to how to be successful, what our president, earlier president, ex-president, uh, APJ Abdul Kalam, what he mentioned, never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place. That is the unique you. Have an aim in life, continuously acquire knowledge, work hard, have perseverance to realize the great life. So we should not stop until we reach the goal. Similarly, Shambhi Vivekananda also mentioned, arise, evoke, stop not till the goal is reached. So if you have an aim and if you, are, you want to reach the, your goal, you will have to try hard. This is the mool mantra of your to be successful.
So I like to end my discussion with a quotation from Swami Vivekananda, what he mentioned, as we understand to be successful, we should be always mentally fit, physically fit, and that is why Swami Vivekananda once told that our countrymen should have nerve of steel, muscle of iron, and mind of thunderbolt. Probably then if we can possess all this, then hopefully we'll be able to successful in our life. Thank you. So before concluding, I like to mention here, so I belong to the chemistry department of Ashram University. So as Dimpi Madam mentioned that I am the head of the department. So now just my term is over. Now I'm not the head of the department. So I advise all the students to come to the chemistry department. They, I request them to visit the department of chemistry. And if they are facing or require anything, any help from the department of chemistry, the teachers of the chemistry department are always waiting to help you. So anytime, any moment, if you are facing any problem regarding chemistry, you can come to the Department of Chemistry, Assam University, Chilcha. Thank you, so, Dipi, Madam. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, this is all about my... Uh, you're wonderfully given the career counseling about the chemistry, how students can choose wisely the career in chemistry. Uh, you have mentioned two, uh, three points that uh, you have to be consistent three Ds of becoming a successful in career. Right. So I uh, would like to say the students that you should follow the determination as sir has mentioned, the three Ds of life actually give you to the uh, success or reach the goal you want. Anything you can do if you focus yeah. on your career, whatever the subject you are choosing, if you follow that, if you um, feel it, if, um, uh, pursuing it in a very fruitful manner, then obviously right. you success. So, uh, some students have, has asked a few questions. I'll yes, repeat the same. Uh, some of the students asked that uh, can we apply for IIT gem with chemistry pass? Actually, pass it is. Recording in progress. So you can uh, unshare your screen. Yeah. Um. So am I audible to you? Yes, yes, you are audible. So actually, yes, uh, some of the student has asked that if they choose for, uh, chem if they have passed BSc in chemistry as past subject, whether they can choose uh, IITs uh, for chemistry in masters in I uh, chemistry yeah. that they have. Asked. Uh. MSc chemistry. Yeah. And for, for reserve category, there may be some relaxation, but there for general, general students.
instance, it will see 60% mark in MSC. Please, can you hear me, madam? Yes, it's actually. Can you hear me, madam? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. No, for uh, doing MSc in IITs, the student should qualify IIT GEM. For that purpose, the qualifying mark is 60% in honors in chemistry. Yes. It's clear, madam? Yes, sir. So next, one of the students 